Welcome to Dizzy Therapy. I'm Anthony Velia, but a lot of patients call me Doc. I'm a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in vestibular rehabilitation, which means that I treat patients with dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo 40 hours every week. Let's talk. Let's talk about how to diagnose and evaluate the causes of dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo. Each test or measure that I'm going to talk about today could probably get its whole own video if I decided to get really nerdy and technical, but the focus of today will be on these brief explanations with three main topics. Number one, what the test is as a whole. Number two, what can you expect as a patient during a test like this? Are you going to have symptoms or not? Number three, what does this test tell the provider? How is it going to help us with diagnosis? I've personally gone through all of these tests and it can seem like a lot when you get it all at once. So please rewind and pause as much as you need to. Make sure you understand. A few things to keep in mind. The tests you receive do depend on the story you tell us. So try to explain in detail what do you feel, when do you feel it, what makes it feel better or worse, etc. Also, not every facility has access to every test, but that does not mean that a good diagnosis can't be made, as each result is just another clue for the provider to make a conclusion. Especially, negative results on a test are actually really important to tell us what you do not have. Lastly, you will be told to avoid certain things, potentially the day of and the day before the tests, like alcohol, caffeine, and planning and medications too, since those can affect the results. And you can't wear any makeup, especially eye makeup. We'll get to that one later. Let's get started. Computerized Dynamic Posturography, or CDP. With either a large machine or a virtual reality headset and platform, this test is to isolate your three balance senses, which are your vision in your eyes, the complex sense of touch in your feet and legs, and your vestibular equilibrioception, which is the balance sense in your inner ears. This is a balance challenge to find your limits. So you'll be harnessed in, there's no chance of falling once you're in that machine. The floor can move to challenge your sense of touch. The walls can move to challenge your sense of vision. Sometimes you'll be asked to close your eyes to really isolate that inner ear sense. How well you can utilize each of these different balance senses is vital information for those who are dealing with poor balance as well as those who have fine balance but are just dealing with dizziness. This gives us really great insight into a diagnosis. Wear something that's not too loose in order for that harness to fit well and be ready to stand upright, since that's all you're actually being asked to do. Hearing test, audiometry, and otoacoustic emissions. You're gonna be sitting in a neat little soundproof booth. You'll be given headphones and asked to press a button or repeat words back depending on the sounds being played. There's also a section where a small stream of air is gonna be put into your ear to find out how flexible your eardrum is. In just a few short minutes, you'll have a really good look at the amount of volume and the types of sounds that each ear can hear, or possibly not hear so well. But this test should not be symptomatic at all, nothing more than a for that eardrum test. A big question I get asked a lot though is, why do I need another hearing test? I just had one. Or, I'm dizzy, but my hearing hasn't changed. But depending on the symptoms you have, like ringing or tinnitus, if you do mention hearing loss, or if your ears feel full all the time, we might need to keep very close attention to exactly how much hearing each ear has for diagnosis and treatment. And considering just how closely related the balance and hearing parts of your ears are, a diagnosis like labyrinthitis or Meniere's disease, hearing loss and dizziness very commonly occur at the same time. So we need to test the hearing regularly to make sure that any potential hearing loss is prevented and to really nail down that diagnosis. Rotary chair. The rotary chair is a very special piece of equipment that's able to strap you into a seat and turn you at very specific speeds to trigger the inner ear system to detect those turns, one of its main functions. You'll be sitting in this chair, 
Goggles will be placed over your eyes to record any eye movements and the lights will be turned off, but no closing your eyes. While moving, you'll be asked to answer specific questions like naming fruits or state capitals. We just need your brain to focus on something other than the movement itself. This test can be symptomatic for some people, but not everyone, and there can be some anxiety involved, but it's important to know that you are perfectly safe and the symptoms are temporary, and the importance of this data is really, really crucial. For instance, this is the only test that can truly definitively diagnose if both ears have been weakened together. So even if you're feeling some dizziness, really stick through it. Electrocochleography, auditory brainstem response, and vestibular evoked myogenic potential test, or ECOG, AVR, and VEMP tests. Now these are three separate tests, but as a patient, they're all fairly similar. You have electrodes placed on your face, head, and neck. You may have some sounds played in your ear to see how your nervous system responds. During one of them, we even tell you, you can take a nap if you want. It's not gonna affect the test. So for the most part, lay back and relax, let the computer do its thing. The VEMP test does require you to move your head, so no sleeping during that one, sadly. These tests are for very specific nervous system functions and can lead to really specific diagnoses like Meniere's disease or superior canal dehiscence syndrome. So for most people, not gonna be positive, but for those who it is, it's very, very crucial. Vestibulo-ocular reflex testing, the video head impulse test, and the dynamic visual acuity test. That's your VOR, VHIT, and DVF. So this needs a little bit of a tangent, but if you watch my eyes, are my eyeballs moving right now? It's a little bit of a trick question. But the thing is, my head moved right, well then my eyes must have gone left, or else I would be off target. Same with up and down. My ears actually feel the change tell my eyes where to go, and I can stay on target. This is called your vestibulo-ocular reflex, and it is very important. The head thrust test, the video head impulse test, and the dynamic visual acuity test, and even more, test your ability to stay on a target even while your head moves. The V-HIT specifically uses those goggles to keep it on with a computer level of accuracy. You have to move your head quickly for these tests so it can be symptomatic, but for myself as a vestibular rehabilitation specialist, this leads directly into treatment so we can make it so that that's no longer symptomatic. These tests are really looking for the consequence of multiple diagnoses, but this is really great because using movements like this is really important for driving, for grocery shopping, and many other things. Imaging studies, MRIs, CT scans, and more. Often with complaints of dizziness, imaging studies being ordered will really depend on where you went first and, of course, the exact symptoms you tell us. An ENT clinic, for example, may not need imaging at all because they have all these other tests we just talked about, or an emergency department may have mandatory protocols if they think there's even a slim chance that you had a stroke. Most MRIs and CT scans use large tubes that you either lay down in or some that you sit up in to look at all this amazing detail inside the body, like how blood flows or structural damage like a broken bone. During these tests, most commonly, you're going to be lying down, slid into place, and the machine will run. If anxiety is an issue, maybe claustrophobia, there are times where sedatives can be given to keep you calm. For some scans, an injection will be given for special purposes, and it can have some very brief but fun side effects, like making you feel like you're wetting your pants. It won't cause that, but it will feel like that briefly. The big benefit of imaging like this is to find structural issues like fractures, tumors, evidence of a stroke, and more. Often with vestibular diagnoses, these tests are not necessarily needed but if there is any suspicion of something like that going on, or in addition to a vestibular complaint, it's a great way to make sure. Remember, a person can have two things at once, so having these tests may be very useful. Video nystagmography, 
or VNG. This is several tests in a row actually, but all are performed in the same chair with goggles placed on your head to record eye movements. You'll be in a dark room throughout the whole thing, and no eye makeup can be worn as the camera is looking for the darkest part of your eye and the makeup can confuse it. You'll be asked to change positions, watch a target move, and have a very particular test called calorics performed. While laying back, a small stream of either water or air, either hot or cold, will be blown into your ear for one minute at a time, and then we're going to do the other side. During all of these tests, you're going to be asked to keep your eyes big and wide and look straight ahead. Even though it's dark, those goggles can see your eyes. Depending on the diagnosis, you may get symptomatic with these tests. Particularly, you may feel some vertigo or spinning sensation. But that is a necessary aspect of the test. And remember, the test is not going to cause you to have a diagnosis. You might feel dizzy during, but it will not harm you or damage your ears at all. Stay relaxed as best you can. Just focus on keeping those eyes open. There are quite a few diagnoses that rely on the data from these tests. In particular, if one ear is weak compared to the other, which is actually quite common, the caloric test can give a specific percentage as to how much stronger one is to the other. This is huge for getting you better, so stick through it. You can do it. Functional physical therapy tests. Now, just as there is a lot of movements and activities that dizziness can affect and interfere with, there is a lot of tests in this category. The focus, though, is to get up and move. What do you personally struggle with? Is it bending over? Is it walking across the house at night, sitting up from bed, walking on the golf course, driving? My physical therapy evaluation will feature tasks depending on what you need such as walking and turning quickly, stepping over an obstacle, balancing in a dark room or uneven surface, and much more. Expect to move and come dressed, ready to move. Whatever level you're at, I just want to see what you are capable of right now. I have had patients literally preparing for Olympic trials and other patients who can't stand safely without both hands firmly on their walker. But I'm going to test both of them at their personal level. Be ready to be challenged. We need to find your limits. So let your PT know what you are feeling. And I personally treat every patient and test every patient with a nice stylish gait belt around them for safety. But the big word here is function. No matter what any tests show, you are the only one who knows your symptoms. So if bending over to tie a shoelace makes you dizzy, let's test it break it down into a movement we can train, and then retest it until it's all better. Before you see a PT, make notes. What tasks, what activities make you feel dizziness, imbalance, or vertigo, and get ready to move. Summary. That's a lot of tests, I know. But remember, not every patient needs every test. If your personal story sounds like a pretty specific diagnosis, you might only get one or two tests just to confirm that. But what if your history sounds a little more complex or ambiguous? Then a variety of tests is probably the best, safest strategy. Some of these are necessary tests that can make a person symptomatic, but I promise you, those symptoms are temporary and they won't cause the diagnosis by getting the test done. And many tests, are happily pretty boring. So trust your providers, stick through it on those trickier tests, and work hard on your vestibular rehabilitation so you can get back to your daily life steady on your feet again. Thank you so very much for watching. Always stay curious about these incredible bodies that God has designed for us so well. Leave a question in the comments below because I would love to know what you all want to learn. Subscribe to Dizzy Therapy for more videos in the future. And remember, dizziness, imbalance, and vertigo are never normal. So visit your ENT and vestibular physical therapist as soon as possible so you can get back to moving freely. Have a great rest of your day and may God bless you with stability throughout your Dizzy Therapy.